Okay, well, welcome to Tuesday Tech Talks. Um, I'm filling in for Clint Stevens. My name is Chris Hott, and I'm happy to have you here. So today we're going to talk about leveraging some of the tools in Canvas, um, the technology tools. Canvas has a great deal of what they're called LTIs, learning, it's a learning tool integration. Um, and those are all the different products that you may use. Today, we're gonna to talk about Spark, but there's Flipgrid and Newslia, Turnitin, all sorts of different things that work within Canvas to be able to help you um, bring that content into Canvas so your kids don't have to be clicking out and ending up with having 30 or 40 tabs open by the end of a learning session. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is how could I use this in my classroom? Um, so anytime that you ask students to create and be creators rather than consumers, you can apply that to any lesson. It could be a book report, could be a science project. Um, there's links and we and I'll share this, this slideshow out in the chat, but there's links on how you can see what other schools can do with it. So just to think about kids being able to create. I've had kids do things like they did kindness posters. Everybody made a poster and then they voted on the best. And then we printed it. We print posters here at SEDC and we printed it. And now it hangs up in that school. So when kids can create things in themselves, I think that's a, a better learning experience for them, especially if they had to do some research and, and bring pictures in. So Spark is a great way. There's three components to Spark and um, I've linked some um, other of Clint's tutorials in here too, but there's the three parts are post, page, and video. So post, think of just as a, uh, like a, a poster, or it could be a, a meme that, you know, if you, kids can create those funny memes, it could be the header for a Facebook page or a Twitter. So they give to you in all different sizes. And so that's just like one piece of paper, a sign, anything like that. A page is just like a web page. You can put in video, you can put in text, you can put in pictures, but it's a way for kids could actually build a website. And if you look at that link about how one school used it, you could see where uh, students have, they were doing a country project and they all had to find information about a country and put it in and create a video. So again, some of those learning experiences. And then there's the video, um, which that's just like creating a video, but again, they can put in narration and text and images, okay? Um, and what's nice about this when you have these learning tool integrations is that they can work with SpeedGrader. So it's really easy to, oh, here's Kathleen. It's really easy to be able to um, add the students and assign them. Hey, Kathleen, how are you? Or Christine, sorry. So we're just talking about Adobe Spark. I'll put these links in so you can see the slideshow and then we'll continue on. Okay, um, so Adobe Spark, great creative tool. Uh, like I said, you can work with it in SpeedGrader. Um, it's super easy for students to submit. I know that's a big challenge, especially with Canvas, not so much with Google Classroom if you're uh, using that, but with Canvas having to send something out to the kids, have them um, annotate it or write on it and then submit it back in. Sometimes that can be a bit of a laborious process. Okay. So lots of different ways. Can you guys think of any other ways that you would use that in an assignment that you've done recently that you could have kids create something to show their learning, their evidence of learning? We're doing like traditions, family traditions and like culture and stuff right now. Um, that might be fun. They can like insert pictures and talk about different ones we've talked about. That would be great because there is a, uh, you can bring photos right in out of Adobe. Um, and they're, it's not like going to Google and getting images. So they'll be able to get some images that you're gonna feel a little bit safer about. And there's a really good selection. I think that would be a great idea. You start talking about the foods, all the different things. And if, if you wanna talk about culture grams, if we have time at the end, but culture grams is in Utah's online library. And that would be a great resource for that type of topic. Good choice. That sounds like a fun project, Whitney. Okay, so you can see there's lots of ways that you can do it. Again, it kind of goes back to the students being the, the creators of the content. Um, so it's as easy as this. You go into Google Assign or um, Canvas and you go into Assignments and you create an assignment, you name it, 
And then what they have, and I'll show you this when we get into Canvas in just a second. But let me ask, Christine, are you using Canvas or are you using Google Classroom? Canvas. Okay, so we'll show the Canvas part too then. We'll make sure we go in and show that. Um, I was talking to Whitney and she's more using Google Classroom. So we'll, we'll kind of balance between the Spark tools and the Canvas. So you just go and create an assignment, use that little socket, that little socket, and it's kind of hard to see on this slide, but that little socket up in your rich content editor, that's what allows you to add these external tools in. And I've already put it in for um, your, your Canvas instance up there in Millard. Um, so anyways, you click on Adobe Spark, and there's also a video that walks you through it, okay? And so after you do that the first time, it's kind of a pain. Um, anybody who uses Adobe knows that they don't make things really that easy, but, but once you get through this, it really works. It's the authentication piece, and it's mostly because there's so many choices um, when you go to log in, because you can see here the choices that are on the screen. The first screen, um, it says select an account. You wanna use that company or school account. Um, if you've created a personal account like I have, you've had one from the past, that'll show up. The kids probably it won't show up on. The kids go through the same process. But because Adobe has partnered with the Utah State, um, and to be able to integrate this um, all, the, all the way. So you have to kind of sign up using your school and make sure your school has enrolled your kids in it. And we've, I've done trainings on Adobe Spark and Millard and I know that it works there. So first you choose the school and then this other welcome to Adobe Spark comes up. And then once you click that login, if it, sometimes it just won't appear and it's, you're trying to figure out why. Well, it's, sometimes there's a pop-up blocker. So right here in your toolbar, and I'll move this down so you can see the better view, but see right up in here, okay, you'll see a little, oops, you'll see a little thing that'll say pop-ups blocked, it'll be an X. And so you'll want to click on that X and that'll bring this pop-up up, okay? And in, in, there's another video that shows it too as well. And then you'll choose their school account. So once they choose their school account, then they're logged right in to Spark. Okay, so as a teacher, once you do this login, then you're going to be, be in Spark yourself. So you're gonna come up with this screen that you see right here, and it's gonna say, um, you can either do your projects or create a new one. So it's really easy just to create a new one from in here, but I've actually found it's easier to go into spark.adobe.com and create my template or find my template and then kind of have it on my dashboard so you don't have to keep going and the load more and, and search because there's so much content in there. So I've already you know created it and I know it's right here. Actually, I didn't create it. I found a template that I just used, took me a minute. Um, and so then when you put it in the assignment, okay, it's gonna look just like this for the kids. They're gonna see that and it's gonna say, make a copy. So here's a Canvas assignment, and we just put the instructions in. And you know we've talked about this in the past, making sure that your instructions are clear so the kids know exactly what to do. So it says, click on make a copy, edit the book review in Spark, and when completed, use the share and choose send to Canvas. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the student clicks on this, it puts them right into their Spark and it makes a copy, kind of like the way that Google Assignment works. Um, so if you do a Google Classroom assignment or if you're using the LTI 1.3 in Canvas, it kind of makes a copy for each student and puts it in their Spark. So then the students um, can go into their Spark and you know, then do everything they can. Now, Clint's talked about Spark. Here's a video um, where he talks about Spark posts. And on the Tech Talk Tuesday playlist, there's also um, Spark video and Spark pages that you can look at as well. So this talks more about that, what can kids do and how do they edit those things? Um, so we're just gonna give them a template and we're not gonna really cover as much of the, the editing because that's a whole nother session that Clint's covered really well here. So then the student creates it, they finish their creation and then they're ready to send it back to you. So this is what it would look like. The student in their account, just on the left-hand side, there's this button that says, turn into Canvas. Okay, or for Whitney and Google Classroom, the kids could send it to their Google Drive, or they could click the, uh, or they could download it and send it to you. 
okay? Or they could invite you. So lots of options to be able to get it to you. But then the thing is too, if they just send it to your Google Drive or share it to you, you still have that issue, where do I put it now? Okay. And with this Canvas integration, um, it actually puts it into SpeedGrader, and we'll look at that in just a second. So when the student clicks on that Turn Into Canvas button, then they have a choice right here, and it, they'll have to choose their course. Now, for you know the younger kids who are maybe only enrolled in one or two courses, that won't be a problem. Your, your high school, middle school kids that have multiple courses are going to have to go look for the course and then the assignment, okay? Once they do that, they click turn it in. See, it works a lot like Google Assignments um, that way. So they can just turn it in. And when they turn it in, it creates like a snapshot of it and puts it in your speed grader. So they can't continue to work on it after they've turned it in. So if your deadline's Tuesday at three o'clock, then you know they turn it in and that's how it is uh, until you turn it back to them, okay? Once they turn it in, it looks like this in SpeedGrader. Now, I don't know, are you using rubrics, Christine, in Canvas? On some assignments, I do. Okay, so you know about rubrics, okay. And so, you know, rubrics are great for grading. So I've added that one in here. So all I'd have to do is just click on that. I can see it, um, the student's assignment. This was just a, a book repair or book review that we, you know, I just had them start. But the kids would go in and just type in this text, okay, and then submit it. And now you've got a book review. Okay, any questions about that so far? Okay, no, so, please. oh, go ahead. Just say no, please. Oh, okay. So here's just a link of more resources, Clint's play, YouTube playlist, some of the Adobe guides, the log instructions. Uh, this, here's a, a video that Canvas did. It's about 42 minutes long and it goes deeper into it. So if you're, more, if you're interested in, in more of this, then uh, go ahead and check out some of those links. But let's go look at what it looks like in Canvas because I just kind of showed you how it went through. So now we'll kind of go through it. Let me make this screen bigger. Can you see my Canvas page now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you can see I've created a few assignments in here. So I'm just going to create a new assignment, say plus assignment. And I'm going to call this Spark Demo. Okay, and remember that little socket icon? Can you see that right there? Can everybody see that okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So come here. Now, my Adobe Spark is up here. Um, it, it shows the things that you recently use right here. But if you go to the view all, then it will show you all. These are all learning tool integrations that you can launch from here. So if you haven't used some of these, uh, Gale, these are part of the Utah's online library. Some of those things in there, CK12. And it's gonna be different for Millard. I'm in our SEDC Canvas, so it might be different, but you just wanna know that if you're using some type of third-party program to check with Drake or I to see if that can be added as an LTI into your uh, Canvas instance, okay? So I just click on Adobe Spark. And because I've already authenticated um, here, see how it didn't make me go through that authentication process. So you just have to do it one time and then you're, you're done with it. So here, I can say I've got my Spark project. So remember I talked, I had already gone into Spark and kind of created something. Or if I just want to create a new one, I can say create new and look at all of these templates. So kind of we, we talked about doing um, some other student research type stuff. What if I took this plant cycle one I could use that and maybe have the kids, um, you know, name all the parts of the plant and, you know, attach it on there. Or I can look here through more. There's order of operation, personal narratives. So you have all of these different templates that you could just choose, or you could start with a fresh page, video, or post. So I'm just going to choose this one right here. So I'm going to attach it. Okay. And so now see how that has put that right in there. All the student has to do is click on that, make a copy. 
Um, and then I would put some instructions in there on, on what I expect the students to, to do. Put your points, okay? And then leave this on is online. And I put in both, so if they wanted to upload the image, they could, but just leave it on the website, however many um, attempts you want. And then putting that date in there, okay? And then I'm just going to save it. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. There we go. I'm just gonna hit save. Okay. And now you can see my assignment, okay? So that's pretty much what the kids would see as well. And so when they go to make a copy, okay, it's gonna take them right in, into Spark. And then you have a couple of these little messages. So now I'm right into that. And all I have to do is start, I can start writing, I can put my text in. And Spark, let me, let me show that again, because that is one thing that always catches me with Spark. Um, you know, you expect that you'd be able to type right in this, but it, the text is responsive. So see if when I click on it, see how it turns it into this screen. So now if I wanted to write the headline, okay, then I could, this is a headline. So the kids basically have to uh, just replace the text that's in there. So now I can say done, but this kind of makes that those placeholders for the kids because what happens, I've done a lot of Adobe training, Spark trainings with kids. And when you come in here and then you start showing them all of the features, like, you know, getting different images. Um, if, if I go here to photos and I can find free photos, all of these things, backgrounds, they start looking at all those things. They kind of get caught up. It's, it's fun to let them go and, and play and explore and figure those things out. But when you're doing an assignment, sometimes you want them to focus on the instructional piece of it and just say, okay, and, and that's a good way to start teaching them. This is what a headline looks like. This is what the body, or maybe you're going to format it into you know, a way that you want the kids to turn it in. Um, so then they can just go ahead and they can move things around. And like I said, all of the different tools are covered in Clint's um, thing. So I just want to, I wanted to make sure that you saw this. And then once they get it done, that share. So this one doesn't show up because I'm not connected as a student through, through this because I'm, this is my account with Adobe, but if it was the student, that's where you would see that share to Canvas button um, because they actually got the assignment through their, their, their student uh, email. So then um, they could just share that to Canvas and then it would show up in SpeedGrader. So let me go back to Canvas and I haven't published that one. Let me go back to the other one where I showed you. Once they put it in SpeedGrader or once they submit it, Again, it shows up in SpeedGrader, just like this, okay? And then that's where you can grade it and do things with, okay? So what do you guys think? Think that's a, a useful tool, something that you would like to use? Yeah. yeah. And, and even if you're not using it with Canvas, like Whitney said, she's Google Classroom, um, you know, even just using Spark for the kids to be able to create, like, so I was talking about the photos. So if we say we want to replace the image. And so here we've got all of these photos and you don't have to worry about them finding inappropriate on Google. So say if I just want this one, then it just kind of replaces it. Um, again, I can do that text. I can change the colors. See how this comes up. I can do different colors. But sometimes, I don't know how many of you guys have ever taught elementary kids how to use PowerPoint when we first started using PowerPoint and it had all the animations and though so every slide would twirl and, and glitter and do all these things. So that's kind of, it can get kind of crazy. Um, but we usually, when we do, the first time I do a training with a group of kids is I just let them explore and figure out all these buttons, figure out how to do the different backgrounds, you know, what they can put in but let them choose. Um, and so maybe if you're doing something that's like on the plant cycle, okay? So if you have, then they would have to go find one on plants. 
Okay, and so maybe you want them to find, you know, one group find deciduous or, you know, different types of plants. So maybe they have to kind of drill down. But here they've got all of these choices. They don't have to go out to Google, try and find something and then import it, upload it, do all that. It just comes right here. And again, they can just add things quickly by, they can add text. Um, they can edit the text here, just, okay, like that. So lots of things to cover in there. If you just go back to the templates, you can see things that are already made, but just going back to regular Spark. Okay, so remember in the beginning, I talked about um, the different sizes. So it makes it even nice if, if you do social media or you do web pages or anything like that, there's all of these pre-made sizes that you can choose or you can do a custom size. So like say you wanna do a poster that you wanna have printed, you would probably wanna do that in 18 by 24. That's the standard frame size. Um, but then you can come down here, you can uh, see your recent projects, what you've been working on, so it stays. So all the kids keep their content right in that one place. And then look at some of these templates for education and you can look at more templates. And I love templates because I'm not creative. If you tell me I want this built this way with this color and a sign here, I can do that. But to get creative and, and have something look good and flow, I get stuck. Um, so here you can look through all of these different templates and take one of these and again, go back and edit it. So you could use these for your own classroom, um, a lot of different things that you can do, but even still having the kids do it, promote their science fair, all sorts of different projects. Okay, any questions? Practicing with my wait time. <laughs> Okay, um, so if you go back all the way to home, I think it is, or it's, oh, it's this one. Oh, there we go. Um, you, you, like I said, you always have all of your projects right here. And remember, you can create a post, a page, or a video. Um, videos are really nice too. For more on that, um, check the, the link on Clint's. And I think I get, let me put this these links back in just in case everybody didn't get them. Everybody, both of you. Okay, so I put the links to my blog post that has that. Feel free to share that out with anybody. I put a link to the Midas credit form if you'll fill that out. Um, when Clint gets back, uh, then he'll get that, figure that for you. And then the link to the Tuesday Tech Talks. And I also just wanted to show Catherine, or I mean, Christine, sorry, that she missed it. The reason why Clint's not here. Um, he's off getting some sun down in Las Vegas, some, a well-deserved break for our good friend. I should have stopped recording then. <laughs> God, I'm gonna...